What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So today's video is I guess kind of a user request video. So I received a video asking or I received an email asking how to model a certain shape within SketchUp but I wanted to go ahead and make a tutorial on that. So before I get started today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon as most of you know is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, um, you're thinking about maybe supporting the show, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create kind of a spiraling roof. So this is an image that was sent to me. And um, basically what it is, is it's a roof that as you can see starts off with a lower spiral that spirals out. And then it's also got a higher roof that spirals out and up. And so I'm gonna show you how to create this skin across this piece. And so you're gonna need a couple extensions in order to do this. So the first extension you're gonna need is Curve Aloft. We've talked about that extension a bunch in the past. Um, you're also gonna need Curve Maker, which I will link to my video on that down below. You're gonna need Helix Along Curve. And if you want to apply a texture to this, you're probably gonna want Fredo tools, which includes through paint. But we'll go ahead and do these one at a time. So to start off, what we're gonna do is basically you have to be able to draw two different spirals in order to create this shape. So I'm gonna start off with the Archimedes spiral section of Curve Maker. And so when you click on the Archimedes spiral, the first thing this is gonna ask is it's gonna ask you how many turns it wants you to start with. In this case, I'm gonna say one and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And then it's gonna say how many turns you want it to go to. So in this case, I want it to go to a second one. So I'm gonna put in two and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And so now it's gonna ask me to set a center point. And so I'm just gonna click somewhere and you can see what this does is this is basically creating a single spiral. So it goes from um, one outline to a second outline. And so what it's gonna ask you is it's gonna ask you for two radiuses. So in this case, the first radius is gonna be your wider radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that at something like 10 feet and hit the enter key. And then it's gonna ask for my second radius, which is gonna set how wide my my second point is and in this case I'm gonna go ahead and say something like eight feet and hit the enter key and so what that does is that goes ahead and that comes in here and that creates my first spiral so that's gonna make up the base of my house or the base of my roof and so one thing about this is I'm gonna go ahead and right click in here and I'm gonna explode this but one thing to note about this is it has a certain number of segments and I don't believe you can come in here and change that and so that's gonna become important because what's gonna to have to happen is you're gonna to have to match the number of segments for your roof so just pay attention to what this number is for the spiral that's created so just remember I right clicked on it and I clicked explode to delete the group that this initially gets created in and then now now I've just clicked on it to see the number of segments and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where the top of my roof is going to start and so in this case we'll go ahead and say this is gonna be um, let's go ahead and call it something like eight feet tall for right now and so I'm basically setting the height so I'm, I'm assuming that this roof at its high point is gonna slope up to eight feet and then probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line down and split this into a two foot segment. And then I'm gonna erase out my bottom piece. And the reason for this is because I'm gonna use this to create my helix around. So you can see how this is basically a two foot line just sitting centered in space. And so if you look at this image, the way this is gonna work is this is gonna have a wider circle in the middle of it. And so what we need to do is we need to use helix along curve to create a helix around this top piece. And so to do that, you're gonna click on this line that you just created, you're gonna activate helix along curve, and you're gonna come in here and you're gonna set both of your radiuses at whatever width you think this is gonna be. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say my radius one and my radius two are both gonna be two feet wide. And I'm gonna tell this that I only want it to create one lap. And if you remember, we noted the number of segments in your curve down below. Well, in this case, you need to note that number of segments again, or enter that here. So you want a 36 segment line. So that way, Curve Aloft will be able to match up all the different segments. And then um, all of this other stuff should be off. You don't wanna create a tube. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit okay. And so what that did is that created 
a spiral that goes in one circle up top. And so now I'm gonna turn this 90 degrees so that these edges line up. So now I've got this line down below, then I've got this line up above. And so I'm gonna go ahead, cause this gets brought in as a group and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna click explode. So you can see what this is, is this is a 36 segment curve. And this is also a 36 segment curve. So that's gonna be very important when we start working with curve aloft. But now what we wanna do is we wanna come in and we wanna draw a line between each one of these points. And so when you draw a line between each one of these points, basically what you've done is you've created a frame that now the create skin option for curve aloft is gonna work with. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come in here, we're gonna select our curve, or our two curves and our two inlines. So you can see how I have all of this selected now. Well, now I can come in here and I can click on the skin contours tool. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna come in and it's basically gonna draw a line in between each one of these points or in between each one of the segments that make up the curves. And so now I can go ahead and I can click in order to finalize that. So you can see what this did is this allowed us to create this kind of ribbon spiraling roof shape. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click in here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click reverse faces. And so that's how you would create your skin in here. And now what you could do is you could just come in here and you could just draw the circle that makes up your main chimney. And you could go ahead and you could push pull that up. And then whatever that looks like on the inside, you could push pull it down if you wanted to. The other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could come in here um, inside this face and you could draw a line depending on how you want this to look and create a face in here. So now this is actually closed off. And once you kind of get an idea of the way this works, you could come in here and you can adjust this workflow. Um, but let's say for example, that this piece on the bottom is gonna taper a little bit. Well, what you could do is you could push pull this down something like six inches, and then you could select the face and you could use the scale tool. So I selected the face, tap the S key. Now I'm gonna hold the control key to do a uniform scale. And you could scale this face in a little bit so you could get that taper that's at the bottom of the roof. And then the last step is kind of optional, but let's say that you wanted to apply some kind of a metal standing seam roofing to this face. Well, what you would do is you would come in here and you would apply this and the first thing you'd notice is this doesn't get mapped to your faces very well. So if you were to turn on hidden geometry, for example, you can see how basically SketchUp is just kind of randomly throwing this on all these different faces because it doesn't know how to map this. Well, what you could do is you could use the extension through paint from Fredo 6 and you could go ahead and click the quad mesh option and then you could just click on this face. And you can see what this did is this came in here and this mapped this to the face, but it mapped it the wrong way. And so you can just click on this face to pull up some options and you can go ahead and click the plus 90 in order to rotate that 90 degrees. So now you can see that this is mapped along this face. And then you could use the uniform scaling option to scale this up or down, allowing you to apply this texture to this face. And so from here, you could really kind of do whatever you wanted. You could come in here and you could start adding a section cut or you could add this to a house model. So there's a lot of different things you could do with this once you create your initial shape. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, and uh, if you want, you can always ask me how to model different shapes. I can't always promise that I'll actually get to them, but sometimes I do. So if you ever have a question, feel free to uh, leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.